All right, so this is our third and final lecture on the Enlightenment, and we're going to talk about the spread of some of these ideas. Uh, prior lectures, we went over an overview, some of the causes, then we talked about some of the specific philosophers and enlightened thinkers. Um, so today we're going to focus on, you know, where and why that spread and how that spread, how those ideas spread. So the Enlightenment, the spread of these ideas happens through three things. Um, you know, some of the ideas about government, about philosophy, um, about law, the enlightened thinkers that they formulate, they start to spread around Europe and eventually around the entire globe, uh, you know, because of the age of exploration that's going on. Uh, and the first is through a salon. And this isn't a, you know, typical salon that you think of. You go get your hair done or you go to a, um, you know, get your, your nails done. Uh, this is a very different type of salon. The second is the printing press, which is not any anything new. We've talked about the printing press a lot in world history, one of the most important inventions uh, in the entire world. And then lastly, I mentioned before with Denny Diderot through the um, encyclopedia. All right, so I'll talk specifics about each of these. So salons, what is it? Well, it's a home gathering. And it's a home gathering where usually wealthy, sometimes middle class, but usually wealthy people, or patrons I call them, wealthy people gather, like a dinner party. Um, you know, your parents get together, your friends get together, you have a little party. Uh, but at these salons, they would, or these parties, these gatherings, they would, people would mingle with each other. They would talk, the middle class, women, the wealthy class, and they would talk about these new ideas. They would discuss the new philosophies and you know, new ideas about government. All of the ideas we've talked about, men and women would discuss, right? This is kind of like, you know, social media at the time, right? Keeping in touch with each other. Uh, and this occurred all over Europe. We're focusing mostly in England and France because those are the two regions we talked about with our philosophers, John Locke and Hobbes and Rousseau, all those people I mentioned before, Mary Wollstonecraft. Um, and actually the most famous salons were um, hosted by a mistress, actually, of the King of France, Louis XV. And um, her name is Madame de Pompadour. And she basically ran these, you know, extravagant parties um, where people would gather and talk and drink and dance and discuss these uh, new ideas. And it was a, you know, a pretty cool way of, of disseminating all of these or distributing all of these ideas. So that's the first way. And that's, that's a through saloons and these, these home gatherings of people to discuss their topics and discuss these new, uh, new ideas. Here is an image um, created a little bit later, early 19th century, 1812. Uh, and this kind of is a, a depiction of what a saloon would look like, a salon, excuse me, not a saloon, a salon would look like. Um, you know, a wealthy person's house, you can tell these people are wealthy based on their attire, uh, this is most likely in um, France, and they would mingle and discuss and, and talk politics and talk government, some of the boring stuff, you know, your parents talk about at the kitchen table today, uh, but this is what a typical home gathering would look like. Our second method of distributing, dis distributing, excuse me, distribution of ideas is the printing press. Now, we talked about the printing press a lot. I don't need to review this anymore. Uh, mass production of, of reading and literature, uh, large sums of written identical work, able to spread and share ideas rather quickly, books, pamphlets, documents, you know, all distributed throughout Europe, leading to a mass spread of knowledge and communication. And also, side note, as I mentioned before, an increase in literacy. Right? Remember, people are learning, still learning how to read and write. Not everyone can attend school like they do today. But the printing press is important for spreading those ideas. I'll leave it at that. We've talked about the printing press a lot in this class. Uh, and then lastly, of course, our new idea <clears throat> is the encyclopedia pictured here as a cover written in French. Um, the two most famous individuals, Denis Diderot and Jean Laurent d'Albert, where were the two most famous people who put together the encyclopedia. We kind of remember Denny Diderot as the most famous, uh, but his colleague was important as well. And the 
over the course of 20 years, 21 years, there were 28 volumes, uh, which is a lot. And, you know, you think of an encyclopedia, it's boring, it's dry, it, you know, uh, let's just look it up on the, on the internet today. But this was their modern day internet. This is what they had. Um, and, you know, 70,000 articles, 140 contributors, meaning authors, people who wrote, people like Rousseau and Voltaire and Locke and Danny Diderot. They are people who write for the encyclopedia, you know, the intellects of the day. Uh, so very, very important um, pieces of information in these new ideas. And as I mentioned before, the idea is to compile a list, compile knowledge together that not just you and I are able to read, but our, our generations are able to read, right? The, the encyclopedia still exists. You could go to the library around the corner here at uh, Woodsound High School and go look at an encyclopedia from, uh, you know, probably a pretty long time ago. Uh, they're updated, you know, today they're digitalized and most of them are electronic. But this is, you know, the modern day encyclopedia. This was revolutionary. This was life changing. Uh, this is providing information all in one place for someone to read. Um, which is, you know, huge. And this is really the entire collection represents the Enlightenment as a whole. Now, this is specific to France, but it represents the ideas and the uh, new knowledge and new sciences and new ph philosophies and new ways of thinking um, that the world, at least that Europe needed at this point. Uh, and it's going to drive a lot of change throughout. Uh, it's also really non-religious as the enlightenment is as a whole the enlightenment is not a religious movement it's a it's an intellectual movement it's a it's a movement based on logic and reason uh, and it's anti-authoritarian meaning they're calling out monarchs they're calling out individual rulers they're saying no that's not the best way to rule besides hobbes of course everyone else is is very hands-off for government very small government we don't need strict government uh, and that's what most, you know, it's against authority, anti-authoritarian. So that's the encyclopedia again. Three ways that these ideas are going to spread across Europe. And this is, again, this is over decades and even centuries uh, through these three types of, you know, methods of distribution. So that is it for today. And that is all the notes on the Enlightenment. Thank you.